Hello, good people, and welcome to Finance Skills Hub. Here yeah, we learn, we connect, and we grow. So we continue our series on how to analyze data with Q functions. If you missed our previous sessions, our goal in this series is to show you an alternative way you can analyze data using Q functions in Excel. In this episode, we are going to look at the data model. So in order to be able to use Q functions in Excel, you need to create what we call a data model. And we are going to show you what it means and then how to create a data model out of the data set that we have. So join me in Excel and let's go through this in a few minutes. So this is going to be our final dashboard, a sales dashboard that gives us details on the products that were sold, the profile of customers who bought our products, and the location that this was bought from and also details on whether we're able to meet profit margins or not of course you can slice this using any of these segments but today our goal is to start off by creating a data model sometimes you have more than one table to analyze the data with so as you have it here we have one transactions table that has every transaction that came through for the period we are analyzing the unique thing about this data set is that there are some columns that contain IDs. So we have customer ID and then product ID. What these columns help us do is to connect to another table that has details of the customer. Okay, so we don't want to unnecessarily repeat each detail when we record a transaction. So we have a separate table that if you put in an ID, it gives us the details of each customer and the segment. Now to be able to make any meaningful analysis out of all these tables, you need to create what we call a data model. So the data model allows you to put all these tables together so that you can access one source for all your calculations. Now, let me show you this in a schema. So if you look at the original data set that contains the transactions, it has some dates and then the customer ID, product ID, CT, and other columns that will help us analyze the data. As I mentioned earlier, not all details of the customers are in that transactions table. So to help us get the details of that customer who bought from us, we have another table that contains all details on customers. And we are going to use the customer ID, okay, to connect to that lookup table. So that lookup table will now give us customer name, customer segment, and any other detail on the customer. Same with another table that has product details. Again, we'll connect with the product ID and then this will help us analyze the data on product category, product subcategory and product name. And then we have another table that gives us details on location. So with each city, the table will help us locate the region and then the country that the city is in. All these tables that give you further details on each transaction, whether it's customer, product or city are called dimension tables. So dimension tables add qualitative information to the numbers in your facts table or your transactions table. Now they have attributes. So if you take the product um, dimension table, product category, product subcategory, product name, product color, all these are attributes that help you dig deep into your data set. They also have a special relationship with the transaction table. So they have common columns. Now, in the dimension tables, that column has a unique list. And then in the transactions table, there are duplicated items in that column. This is because a customer can buy from us as many times and all those recordings will be done in the transactions table. But we have only one entry for the details of the customer in the customer table or the dimension table. So the transaction table, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact table. And fact tables usually contain transactions that have the numbers we are interested in analyzing. Example, sales, cost, okay? And then they can be aggregated and then you can use it in your analysis. So it is this schema that we are going to use to create our data model. We'll connect our relationships. And from that point, we are able to use our Q functions to create all the calculations and measures we need in this data set. So let's proceed to Excel and then I'll walk you through how to create a data model. So we start off with a start file. This has been shared on our YouTube channel. So this is already a table and you see that in here. I have a table design tab here. In our earlier video, 
I showed you how you can activate the Power Pivot tab if it's not already showing in your ribbon. If you have the Power Pivot tab and this is already a table, stand in there and then add the first table to the data model. So we need to put all the four tables in the data model. So this is the data model Power Pivot space. When it opens, it shows you a preview of how it looks like. It's a columnar view. You can exit out using the Excel icon here back to your original worksheet. So this first table is up there. Now let's add the rest. So the same process, I will stand in here, add this to the data model, and then come back to my Excel sheet, add the customer, the location table to the data model as well. And then finally, I'm going to add the products to the data model as well. So after you've loaded the tables, you see that in the Power Pivot window, there's data view and diagram view. So the data view would present the columnar um, tables, okay, with the details of each field. But when you switch to the diagram view, you are able to see a visual way. You are able to see in a visual way all these tables. So usually the fact table is in the middle or placed downwards. So these are my dimension tables and then this is the fact table. Our goal here is to connect these tables as I mentioned because customer ID is present here and is also present in my customer, in my transactions table, I can easily connect this from the fact table to the dimension table for customers. This has a unique list, this has a duplicate list. So it creates a relationship we call one to many relationship. So we are going to do the same thing here. So city will connect to the city column here. And then I have my product ID connecting to my product ID here. Okay. So by doing this, we've now created one source where all our calculations are going to come from. And from this point, we are able to now calculate all the Q functions that we need to create our dashboard. So once you've done this, you can exit and then you are back into your original workbook. Back in your workbook, you can use any of the Q functions and then you can now call that data model and then begin your calculations. In a subsequent video, we will learn how to create the calendar table. And then once we have the calendar table set, all our calculations will now follow. So join me in the next series as we build up towards building our final dashboard. Please visit our YouTube channel for the workbook so you can practice along. Thanks for watching. For more of these short videos, you can send add to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly on your phones. All our old videos are on our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Up. Please visit, subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.